Isn't that a sweet sign? There's a very small hint for today's topic hidden in that photo. It's down here. Any ideas? It's that dark spot here. It's on the inside of the blue tube and it's a damage of the tube. And if we turn the sign around, we see that blackout paint has somehow uh, vanished at these spots. So what's going on? When I received this sign, the tubes were shifted like this and almost touching. And the sign manufacturer made a mistake when wiring the transformer. It's an electronic transformer and it was directly wired to these two tubes that come very close to each other. Why that is a problem and what else you can do wrong in today's episode. This is another video about high voltage, so remember that you are responsible for what you're doing and please refrain from these tasks if you don't really feel confident and qualified. Here we have a classic heavy uh, magnetic or core and coil transformer. It runs on 50 or 60 Hz frequency from the power grid and on the insulation of these wires, uh, when a sign is running, you can feel a slight vibration in your fingertips. And that's an electric field generated by the high voltage. It can also generate a humming noise, for example, when the wire runs on sheet metal in a channel ladder. And this one can do the same job as the heavy one. They're both 9 kV in some, but not in all situations. It also contains a wire wound transformer, but it's very little, maybe in this area only. And the reason is the higher the frequency, the smaller the transformer can be built. And these run at 20 to 30 kilohertz typically. This one says 24 kilohertz. And the rest of the case is just a circuit board generating that high frequency and holding the safety circuits and a line filter. So this is smaller, lighter, more efficient and cheaper than this one. But uh, the price we have to pay is that the high frequency generates stronger electric fields along these wires and also along the neon tubes of the sign. The wires and the tubes are acting like transmission antennas that are sending out that electric field and that causes more losses on this one than on the old transformer. Let's look at this setup. We have an electronic transformer with some wire length to the tubing and we have a grounded metal surface nearby. Then we will get losses from the tubing as well as from the wires towards ground. And we will also get losses between the outputs of the transformer on the wires as well as between the tubes. And all these losses will put additional load on the transformer and limit the possible output length. The length of wires that they come with is the maximum they can do, so you can't go longer than that. And the shorter you can cut it, the better. Losses towards ground we have, for example, when the wires are tied to the metal frame like this. And here applies the longer the worse and the higher the secondary voltage of the transformer the worse. So you might remember when I said it's not so critical on this sign because there's only 1 or 2 kV um, running on that output. It would be much more of a problem at 8 or 9 kV. And in that case the wires should just be going through the free air or just tied to the frame in very small spots. The losses make it difficult to use these where you have to run longer ways on metal, like on a big sheet metal plate where your tubes are mounted on. You can, however, put the wires on non-metallic spacers or insulators and an inch of distance to the metal will already make it much better. So the improvements we should do here are just bring that transformer close to the tubing as possible. That will reduce losses between the wires and towards ground. And if it's possible, we could also try to get some more spacing towards the grounded metal. In general, the electronic or solid state transformers uh, cannot be used for very extensive neon, like for example, a 9 kV transformer for border tubes on a building. You will have so much losses that the tubes will get darker further away from the transformer if the transformer even does stay on. And also, it's absolutely not possible to run these wires in metal conduits like EMT or flex conduit. Now for the losses and problems between the outputs, let's have a look at this setup. We have an 8 kV electronic transformer with secondary midpoint grounding, so it will have 4-E-4 kV on the nameplate. And at one moment in time, we can imagine that this top wire is putting out plus 4 kV 
and the bottom wire is putting out minus 4 kV in reference to ground and this will the polarity will change in the frequency of the transformer output so as we're just looking at this single moment we have plus 4 kV here each of the tubes uh, requires 2 kV to work so this tube drops 2 kV that leaves us plus 2 left here this drops 2 kV we have a virtually 0 volts here this drops to minus 2 this drops to minus 4 kV so let's say we have the tubes mounted like this is that a problem yes that is exactly the problem from the first photo from the Pepsi sign. We have 8000 volts of potential difference between these two parts and that will generate a noise, generate ozone smell, damage the tubing and this can go as far as breaking the tubing. I have seen signs where that actually happened, where the tube broke in this spot because of that problem. So there's an actual rule of thumb. You should at least be able to fit your thumb between these two tubes. And some neon standards like the EN5107 will give you uh, millimeter spacings required depending on the voltages. Now what about this? It's still not good, but it's let's say just half as bad as the picture before. We only have 4 kV potential difference between here and that. There's a wire connecting these two tubes and just a short piece of tubing in the letter E. So we will only have a, a few hundred volts of difference in that spot. So this would actually not be a problem in the sign. And the same here. We are not on the zero potential, but again, these tubes are connected with a wire and we will only have very little potential difference between these two spots. And it's just the same towards ground. So is that a problem? Yes. We have 4 kV towards ground and we're very close here. And this will also be in the, for example, in the EN5107, the minimum spacing towards grounded metal depending on the output voltage of the transformer. And on the right side, well, this will still not be uh, compliant with the standard, but it will actually electrically be less of a problem, much less of a problem than this, because we have almost the same potential as ground in this spot. And the classic core and coil transformers actually have the same problems, but they're just not as bad. They are worse because of the high frequency on the electronic transformers. All right, let's say I have this beer sign. It's the Pepsi sign from the beginning. The tubes are bent and mounted uh, like this, and I cannot change that. And I have the problem. Maybe I have converted the sign from a classic to an electronic transformer, and now I have a problem in this spot. So what can I do? I can check if it's possible that I just connect these two tubes together that have the problem. So I jump here and put the power feeding transformer somewhere else like this. And with that little change I have completely removed the problem from the sign. So here's an incomplete list of hints for electronic or solid state transformer use. Do not extend the output wires and cut them as short as you can on your sign. Do not roll up spare length of these wires. Keep at least an inch of space between the output wires of the transformer. The less metal these wires touch, the better. The lower the voltage is, the better. So using two 6 kV transformers might be better than using one 12 kV. Keep at least a thumb of distance between tubes with a high voltage difference. Use non-metallic tube supports and keep a distance between tubes and metal. Always follow your local neon standards and see if they have creepage and clearance tables. Always ground metallic sign frames and ask your transformer manufacturer if their transformer can be mounted directly onto metal or not. I hope you learned something in this video. Remember, neon holds potential risks of electric shock and fire, and you are responsible for the safety of a sign you have worked on. So if you don't feel confident that you can really judge these risks, just get somebody to help you with it. All right, see you soon. Take care.